All right, so you're using Google Sheets, you have a large table of data like we have here, and you want to either rearrange the data or hide some of it, kind of filter out what you don't wanna see. We'll go over lots of different ways to do that and we'll start out with the easiest. So let's tell Google Sheets where our data is. It might be kind of obvious if you're looking at it, but if you go to data right now, the sort range option, which is what we'll be using, is grayed out. So let's tell it uh, our data is in A through H. So highlight all of those columns. I didn't highlight specific rows. I just highlighted the columns so it'll go all the way down to the bottom. And we'll go up to data. And now we're going to start to look at how to actually sort your data. So this will not be a filter. That's going to be next. So the first thing that we'll do though is look at sort range. And that's because we highlighted the range. So the menu gives you two basic options at this point. And all it puts in there is you want to sort it by column A. So that's always the leftmost column in the table that you highlighted. In this case, let's say we wanted to sort it by date, right? And that's not in column A. So neither of these two options will work. So we're going to go straight into advanced range sorting options. You can even just always start there if you want um, because you get some handy options here and we're going to use one of them right now. So if you look at this table of data, the first row is not like any of the others, right? The first row is our header row. Some tables have that, some don't, but it's very important. If you do have that, you need to tell Sheets that you do so that doesn't accidentally get sorted. But the other thing that it does is it grabs the text out of each of those cells in the header row and it puts them in the sort by dropdown. So now you'll be able to see easier what you're doing. And what we want to do is we want to just sort it by order date, nice and simple. So let's just pick order date and we can either do it forward or backward, ascending or descending. Let's leave it on ascending. And the next thing that you can do here is let's say that you want to look at it by date, but then you also want it to be sorted by ship mode. So by date, by ship mode. All you have to do is add another sort column. So we'll click here and we'll say, oh, it guessed right, then by ship mode. And we'll just do that one descending just for kicks. And we press sort. And it looks like the earliest order in this table was January 8th, 2023. But then you see the next thing, actually you can't tell here because there's only one type, let's go down. If you go down to January 13th, you have more than one shipping mode on the same day. So these are all January 13th, but it also sorted them backwards because the S is first by the type of shipping. All right, so this entire list, none of the data went away, but it all got resorted and now you can use it for the next step. So one important thing to keep in mind when you sort, or actually when you filter to, let's go down to the bottom, we're going to just add one row. And a lot of times your table won't go all the way down to the bottom, there'll be space down there, uh, but not in this case. So actually we'll just add 10 rows so you can see. And let's act like we're going to add more data. So I will copy this one and we'll paste it. And then I'll just say, well, this was November 2nd. So keep in mind, when you add new data to a row after it's been sorted, that data will always go just where you put it. It won't get resorted until you manually do another sort. If you want your table to automatically sort, I've linked to an option that we actually built that will do it for you. It's a Google Sheets add-on. Check that out if you want your table to always stay sorted. That's actually the name of it, stay sorted. But for now, just know that you have to just do this sort again for that to be sorted. So just repeat the steps that we did a minute ago and you'll be good. And that covers the very basic option of sorting from the menus. And let's go back up to that menu though and look at the next option, which I usually use this. I don't even do a sort and I do a filter instead and you'll see why. So let's just create a filter. So what this does is it places, uh, you get these little indicators on each column which show you that a filter is on. 
And the easiest thing that you can do with a filter, we'll do this first, is to actually just do a sort. So this is why I never use sort because I turn on a filter and then I just use that to sort. Let's say we wanna do it by subcategory. We click on this control and here you can do the same thing as a sort. So you can sort A to Z or Z to A. We'll just do that Z to A. There you go, leaves all of the data, just rearranges it. That's the basic thing that you can do with a filter. But the next thing that you can do is actually remove some of the data from the view. So you're not deleting it, but you're removing it from view. I'll show you what we mean on that. Let's go to price and let's just say we want to look at the items that are, let me get rid of this for a second, over $300. All right, so let's uh, filter by a condition. We're gonna call that a condition. And we're going to say, so you have all of these options here. Some of them work on text, some of them work on numbers. We will say greater than 300. It knows to apply it to the price because that's the category or the column that I'm using the control from. So it will work on this column. In any row with a price less than $300, it'll hide the entire row. So we'll click OK. And it's kind of hard to tell that this filter is on. But just recently, Google Sheets um, released an update that helps you notice this. So before, you just had the indicator that this icon is a little bit different than the others. But now it'll show you in the bottom right-hand corner that a filter is applied. And it's only displaying 1,000 of the 5,000 rows. Those, those other rows aren't deleted, but you can't see them. So another indicator, if you go over to the left, you'll see the row numbers now go from one to a four. And with both a sort and a filter, be careful that you select the range correctly. So if your range actually went over to I or J, or you had some data over here that you wanted to keep with certain rows, if you apply this filter, but don't have those within the range, the rows in the range will move, but this data stays in place. So it's going to get out of sync with what's over to the right if it belongs to that same row. So just be careful of that when you're doing this. All right, let's turn this filter completely off. Remove filter. And another way to apply a filter, it's actually a little bit easier than doing it from the menus. If you wanna see, let's just say everything that was shipped via second class. If you right click on that, you can create a filter right here and just say filter by cell value and that's, automatically only everything that's second class. And it does make it look like the ones that we just went through. So you can see that's filtered by the icon on the column. And it also tells you how much it filtered out. Now, one limitation of filters is you can't apply multiple sort criteria like we did with uh, the menu item to sort. So you can't sort by order date and then categories. What I mean by that is if you go to order date, you can sort by order date, but then if you go to category, that's going to resort it just by category. So keep that in mind as a limitation. If you want to do a multi-level sort, probably just do it the old way through uh, doing a sort from the menu first. So that covers the basics of sorting and filtering. I do have another video about sorting by color. I'll link to that if you want to watch that. But we're going to move on. Let's call these the intermediate, kind of the next level of sorting and filtering. And the first one that we'll go through, let me remove this filter first, is going to be a slicer. Sounds cool, I'll show it to you. We will add a slicer and it brings up this menu to the right. And the first thing that it wants is the source data. So it guessed this pretty well. It, it grabbed the whole table, so we're good to go on that. And then let's just choose a column We'll say we want to slice this by order date. And what this does is it's actually really similar to a filter, but it lets the user see this and control it. So first we'll apply one here. Uh, let's just do just one date. So we'll clear all of these. Just do January 8th, click out of it. And that didn't work. Let's just, we'll click clear, just do January 8th. And I have my screen blown up here, so I lost the button. You know, go down there, click okay. 
And this is the same thing that a filter would do, but now it's very obvious to the user that a filter is applied. So this would be helpful if you are presenting this in front of a group or if you're sharing the spreadsheet. So if you have 10 people inside a spreadsheet, it can be quite confusing when things are being filtered by one user and no one else can see it. So this is one way around that. Another reason why you might wanna use it is if you're just doing a presentation and you're changing the things that you're filtering on, you can do it this way and everyone can kind of understand what you're doing. And another feature that's available for when you're working with multiple people is uh, let's take this uh, slicer off for now. So we will delete the slicer. And imagining that you're working with lots of different people and maybe those filters that you're applying aren't relevant to them. So you don't want to limit what other people are seeing. Maybe you don't want to sort the data that you're seeing, but you still all want to work on the same worksheet. What you can do is you can go to data and then you can add a filter view. So we'll create one here and you get this black outline to make it obvious to you that you've applied a filter view. And you can operate these in a similar way to a regular filter. I'll link to a video uh, more about how to use these. But the big thing is when you apply one of these, it doesn't change the data view for anyone else that you're sharing it with. And you can also save the state of the filter and reapply it uh, easily, have multiple filter views if you want. So we'll undo the filter view. So that covers the basics and some intermediate techniques. And the next thing that we'll talk about is kind of, we'll call it the pro level sorting and filtering. These are functions that you can use that keep the original data in place. So it's not going to change what you're looking at at all. They're going to create a new dynamic list that's the original data sorted and or filtered. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's go over to the right here. Let's actually shrink this table down a little bit. I have the view expanded. Go to the right. So there are uh, several functions. One is sort, one's called filter. There's also one called sort in that would uh, return the top, say five values, bottom three values. It's a really neat function, but it's a little off topic. So we'll stick with filter and sort. We'll do filter. And this is a similar concept to what you see from the menus, but it's all done from a function. So the range will be, we'll pick this entire range. And then the condition, we'll say when column F, so we'll specify it like this because we don't have row numbers in our original data either. But let me step back one step. A problem or an issue with the filter and sort functions is that they'll also grab your header and treat it like part of the table. So let's go back and we are going to specify a starting row number. We're going to make it two. So we'll do that with our condition as well. So it's kind of weird to put in the condition because it has to be the same height as the table or the range is the terminology they're using here. Well, but we'll say uh, we're going to filter it when F is, we'll do greater than 200. You can use multiple conditions. We'll just say we'll do this one, hit the filter. I didn't think that worked at first, but I accidentally typed less than here. So this list is all generated from cell J2. So if I go down one, yeah, I can see in the formula bar that there's CA 2016 in there, but I hit delete. It doesn't go anywhere because it's all being generated from J2. So this is a, a kind of a different class of functions and it writes an array from one cell, meaning that it writes into other cells, columns and rows, all from one location. So this is all coming from J2. You can't delete it. If I would put something else in here, it gives an error in the filter function because it's saying, hey, I don't have room to write out my results here. So you gotta make sure you have room for it. We'll delete that. And the other thing to keep in mind is that we had talked about this briefly. It does not output headers. So an easy way around that is just to copy and paste this header. You can do that. And there we go. So the sort function will be a similar theory where it's doing what the sort does from the menus, but it's actually creating a new dynamic output. You can go pretty deep with what the filter function can do. In this next video, we're going to compare it to another even newer function called XLOOKUP. 
and we'll show how you can use the filter function to return values in some ways better than XLOOKUP does. I'll see you in that video. Thanks for watching.